This first one is without mixing. So typically you have a hot stream on one side and a cold stream on the other, and the heat is being transferred through the metal that separates them. Maybe that metal's copper tubes, so it is good at conducting the heat through. Okay? Maybe they have ribs or fins or make it all, you know, but this is a simple concept to, to promote the heat transfer. You come in with the hot fluid, M.H. I wonder why they picked the subscript H for the hot fluid. I wonder why they picked the subscript C for the cold fluid. Makes sense, right? Comes in at 1, goes out at 2. You can talk about all your other properties, but the key property is you have the flow exergy 1 coming in and the flow exergy 2 going out. Likewise, for the cold fluid, it comes in at 3 and out at 4. So we have the flow exergy 3 and the flow exergy 4. couple questions before we get too bogged down. Can you compare EF2 and EF1? Which one's greater? Are they the same? No, they're not the same. Come on. What? What, what is? All right. It'll really help you if you do the temperature one, temperature two. Is temperature one greater than or less than the temperature two? It's greater. That's exactly right. And so now. Uh, this flow at 2 is going to be less than the flow at 1, or EF1 is going to be greater than 2. True? Now, go to the cold fluid and do the same thing. Talk about the temperature. You know, temperature 3 compared to temperature 4. Is temperature 3 greater than or less than temperature 4? Four? Temperature 4 is greater. That's true. So, temperature 3 is less than 4. Thumbs up? I know I'm moving probably pretty fast on this, but you need to really think about it, okay? And then how about the flow exergy EF3 and EF4? Whoops, kind of right up here. Which one? Four is greater, three is less. Make sense? So now we go to an exergy balance for the control volume surrounding the entire system, okay? So on their exergy balance, we have steady state, nothing with the heat transfer. What do you mean, nothing with the heat transfer? It's a heat exchanger. There's a lot of heat transfer. But it's not to the surroundings. It, they say something like it's an insulated heat exchanger. That sounds like a contradiction, right? Well, it's insulated with respect to the surroundings. So there's no heat transfer out. Okay. All right. So... But within the heat exchanger, there's hopefully a lot. And then you have no shaft in or out. And then we're going to have the mass flow rate of the hot, and we have EF1 minus EF2. Whoops. EF2 plus the mass flow rate of the cold, EF3 minus EF4. Plus, or no, not it's not plus, minus... Exergy destruction. Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to ask you to look at that equation and tell me if I have an error in it. If not, give me a thumbs up if you agree with that equation. Well, no, either I have an error or I don't have an error. I have, uh, okay, but that term was struck to zero. I have a negative here and a negative there. If three, three is an in, and the one is an in, and two is an out, and four is an out. True? So um, I'm looking for thumbs up if you like the equation or tell me where my error is. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. I get some people are uh, not wanting to participate. I like 100% participation. How's that? I can call you out. You got it? You too? Thumbs up? Back there? Up? Good? Did you already give me a thumbs up? You're still thinking? We can wait. <laughs> These are really tricky, aren't they? 
Because what you're doing probably in your mind is saying, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. This, this is going to be a positive quantity, isn't it? But this is going to be a negative quantity, isn't it? Don't sweat it. We'll take care of that in a minute. But is it right? All right. Uncle, he's called uncle. <laughs> All right. So now let's rewrite this equation because m dot h times EF1 minus EF2 is what comes into the system supplied by the hot fluid. And where does it go? It either goes to increasing the flow exergy, and this is where I'm going to switch that sign, of the cold fluid, or it goes into being destroyed. Now I'm going to stop because I switched EF4 and EF3 to make it a positive entity, and I put a plus sign in front of that. Did I do the algebra correct? Now we can read this equation, can't we? It's what came into the system from the hot fluid. And it goes into one of two places. It goes into the cold fluid or destroyed. But that's our exergy accounting. It has to be taken into account. Exergy doesn't vanish. It can de be destroyed, but we have an accounting. True? What is each one of these terms in units of? Kilojoules, kilowatts? Kilowatts, kilowatts, kilowatts. Well, as a good engineer, we want as much to go to here and a little to go, whoops, didn't get the arrow all the way across, as little to go there. Why? Destruction doesn't help anybody. True? So here is an efficiency, exergetic efficiency, second law efficiency for this heat exchanger without mixing. It's a counterflow heat exchanger. And what do we want? It's We wanted the fluid exergy to go somewhere, and it came at the expense of someplace. We wanted it to go m dot c ef4 minus ef3. True? m dot h ef1 minus ef2. Does that appeal to your logic? Do you like that flow, I mean, that exergetic efficiency for our non-mixing heat exchanger? 